Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Mini True Nerd, and welcome back to Medieval 2 Total War, where you join us in Europe, well, at war, understandably, though, some slightly weird wars, I'm gonna be honest, some really, really bloody weird wars. So, Scotland have lost Scotland, they now just live in Ireland, and as for Wales, that belongs to the Portuguese, just don't bloody ask, alright? Meanwhile, down in Paris, well, that belongs to the Danish, but the French want it back, but first... How could we start with anything other than the absolutely flipping awesome force of all of us fighting together against the Polish capital? Because this is just going to be seriously badass. I kind of wish the Venetians would get involved. I think they're... Are you in the right position to be? I think they might be, actually. Yeah, I think just like this point, the banners are getting confused. Hang on, let's just remind myself how many people are involved in this here fight. Oh yeah, the Venetians are involved. It's me, the Venetians, and the Papal States, but the Hungarians have decided not to get involved. Even though they are part of the Crusade, because they hate me personally, but whatever, eh? Right! So, looks like we've got to take out the thousand men of the Polish, well, pretty much the Polish survivors, to be honest, because, yeah, the... Hang on, who was it? Was the... Oh yeah, it was the Portuguese that already had a go and failed, but that's fine. Now at this point, oh, you poor bastards. You poor, poor bastards. I think I'm just going to sit back and let this one happen, though. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how well my computer takes care of this, because this is going to be a lot of men on the battlefield. And bear in mind, I've modded this game so that uh, it can never go over to little sprites at distance. It has to 3D model every single man on the field. And there's going to be, like, 7,000, 8,000 men on this field, so that's going to be good. Oh, this is what I wanted to see. Here we go, the Papal States actually on the flipping field. Sadly, not the Pope himself, not the Pope himself. Ah, but he has actually brought himself catapults. Good, so we can actually get in by himself. I believe, however, that you bastards cannot. No, you haven't got any siege equipment or any catapults. Back in Rome 1, if you were helping an ally take out a city, the game sort of gave you a free ram so you could help out more effectively. But uh, tragically, in this game, not such of a thing. Fine, I uh, need to be careful here because uh, this is a big, big city and there's plenty of walls. So we can't just assume we're going to stroll in here because I don't have a single catapult or anything. Instead, let's just start lining this up here. So if I'm going to be trying to take down a gate, and honestly, that's what I want to do. I just want to basically open up one breach in the wall, and that's fine. Now, if I just basically send both of my rams forward simultaneously, and whichever one makes it through, that's good enough. Meanwhile, I also want to use a couple of ladders just for screening purposes. Because, of course, ladders can't be burnt down. So uh, they will be useful just providing a little bit of cover, if nothing else. So a ladder can just basically be heading over to, yeah... One ladder heading in this direction, one ladder heading in this direction. That's absolutely fine. And they'll provide a little bit of cover for the ram. So, start the battle, and bear in mind, we do, of course, have... Why are you guys over here? Okay, you guys position over here, and you guys position over here, if you'd be so kind. Just in case you guys need backup. But let's not worry about that for now. We should be able to do this a little bit more easily than that. So, start the battle, and uh, would you believe... The fire has already begun. Right, you lads are over to here. You lads are over to, uh, over to here. And both of you lads just start moving forward together. Okay? And that is... Oh, blimey. Okay, that's not kidding. In fact, actually, is this... That's ballista towers. Ooh, that's tougher than I was expecting. They built ballista towers here. Okay, gotta be careful of... Oh, blimey, they've already taken out one of the rams. Bloody hell. Right, okay. You lot... Get back. The rams might struggle to get through against ballista towers. Ballista towers against a single ram. That ram will take a lot of flipping damage. Though, luckily, some of the fire will be pulled up against these lads. What's actually up on the walls? Of course, they have to split their forces across all the different walls and gates in case someone else comes in. So, we've got, we've got mercenary crossbowmen and peasant archers. Fine. So, if we just get up on these walls... That's the second ram gone. Right. That's not too surprising... Given the situation is, in fact, uh, yeah, flipping ballista towers. So that's fine. They've provided a useful bit of cover for these lads. We've got Crusader Sergeants coming up on the walls. They should be able to come over here and hopefully take a gate pretty easily. Now, what are you guys doing with your... You're going over there. Why are you going over there? I've no idea why they are going over there. They've just decided they are. Uh, they presumably want to 
go into an actual flipping hole in the wall rather than just knocking down the gate, which would be the sensible thing. And the Venetians aren't doing anything right now. They're waiting for an opportunity. That's fine. Ah, there's something over here as well. Ah, that's just peasant archers too. So we're basically just sending proper troops against peasant archers. That's not so bad. And looks like our ladders have indeed made it up to the walls. Nice. Right, speed this up while they actually just start climbing. Peasant archers have, like, a defense of, like, I can't remember, five or something? No, attack of five, defense of two. So you'll see these guys basically get stabbed and fall over pretty quickly because any attack from my lads will kill them pretty much instantaneously. These lads are now immediately abandoning this area, which is fine. So you lads just take out the mercenary crossbowmen if you can. You lads can just take out these lads. They're steady for the time being, but that won't last. Peasant archers are piling in as well, but... This is not going to work out well for you. These Crusader sergeants are coming over here. There's weakened mercenary Frankish knights. There's town militia coming in over there as well. This is probably okay. Unless, of course, these guys break purely because of the issue of being outnumbered. But town militia are not much. You go and take these guys out. These guys can hopefully hold. If they can't hold, then that's fine. More town militia piling in over there. Fine. The AI seems to have detected that obviously my side of the battlefield is the most dangerous one. But not by a huge margin. These guys are shaken, but they'll hold for the time being. These guys are going to drop pretty fast too. Town militia are basic crappy troops that can't stand up to actual crusader sergeants. Even though, of course, those are spearmen, not proper heavy infantry. So that's absolutely fine. Uh, probably the best thing we can do is send a few reinforcements, just a handful, over in that direction. What have I got that's nice and cheap and cheerful? I had one unit of Viking Raiders. That'll flipping do the job. Right. Viking Raiders, why don't you get up here and help out? Lovely. So you just get in there and provide a bit of support. And you, you're also damaged. Get up here and help these lads out. We just need a few more troops to stop the outnumbered morale penalty. And the frame rate's definitely a little bit unhappy with me right now. <laughs> There's a lot of troops on the field. Uh, speaking of which, what's going on with... Yeah, you guys have decided to take out this one particular wall. Which is intriguing. Also, you've decided to actually put your siege equipment in such a position as it's in range of this tower. Bloody geniuses. Right, in come my reinforcements. Still no move from the flipping Venetians. But if the wall goes down before I can open up a gate, then theoretically... Oh, in comes more flipping spear militia. Right. The Polish have rather intelligently figured out where the weakness is. They have indeed decided to send a very significant number of reinforcements over towards me. But that's fine. Plenty of my lads will make it through, albeit not a huge number. I think I've lost about 10 there and about 10 there. Ah! The walls have indeed gone down, so regardless, I probably should have just stayed back and let them handle that. Now, what are the Venetians planning to do about this? The Venetians are planning to... Start moving. All right, some of them around this way, some of them around that way. So sooner or later, they'll get in there. That's absolutely fine. We've got peasant archers and whatever over here. We've got more and more troops over here. These guys, it's going to take them some time to flipping actually get defeated. You lot actually, hang on. Uh, you lot over here. Yeah, this is you. You get over here and hit these spear militia in the back. I want you to get involved in this fight, not the other. You are shaken and winded, but you've got 80 strength and you're doing a decent job. Those guys seem to be wanting to run away right now. So turn your attention over to the mercenary crossbowmen. Because they're a little bit better on the armoured side. They've got proper leather armour and actual sword. So maybe focus on them. Because actually, straight up fight, those guys will do surprisingly okay. So, hang on, where are you getting stuck? You're getting stuck over... Get over here. Get over here, please. Or are you already stuck in that fight? Uh, I think there might be kind of... It's a bit of a traffic jam up on the walls. It's fine. Interestingly, the Papal State's forces have no interest in moving into the breach they've just actually opened up in the walls. <laughs> Guys, this was supposed to be our super badass awesome moment. Or have you decided you... Oh, you want to open up a second breach directly next to the first? Well, of course you do. Right, my Viking Raiders have finally made the decision that they're actually willing and able to cross over onto this side so I can get them into the back of this here spear militia. So in a moment, they're going to start powering through there. Lovely. So in we go. All of a sudden, these guys are going to find themselves squeezed very quickly and spear militia are not going to stand up well. Oh, yeah. Spear militia are going to collapse in the face of actual Viking Raiders. Viking Raiders, well, they're not heavy infantry, but they kind of fill the same sort of role. They'll do a very, very good job indeed. So these guys are being cut down nice and fast. We've actually got the reinforcements up here. You guys get over... Ah! 
You guys, get over there, please. And you lot, who are a bit fresher, get over here in the back of the mercenary crossbowmen. Marvellous. So at this point, the walls are pretty much close to being under our control. These guys are backing off and panicking. We've got, yeah, a mass Venetian movement towards the Papal States breach. The Papal States themselves can't really be bothered with all of that. We've technically... We briefly captured a gateway, but I think we've lost it again. <laughs> ah, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Hopefully, at some point, someone will decide to come in through this gate if we capture it. Lovely. And a second breach by the Papal States. That should be pretty much all the ammo used up. I think this was a large stone wall. Awesome. I'm amazed that your troops are actually still alive, given they're being fired on by flipping flaming ballista towers. No, they want more done yet. <laughs> They're not ready for this yet. Okay. But while they continue on with that, the Venetians are on their way. Fortunately, not being torn to shreds by towers. Of course, uh, in Medieval 2 as opposed to Rome 1, towers only activate when enemies are standing close by to them. Which is a bloody relief as far as the Venetians are concerned. And in fact, Barbus the Mad is just going to walk straight past... No! Hang the flip on! Barbus the Mad decided to actually climb up our towers! Using what exactly? Using Slav mercenaries! Okay, we've got Slav mercenaries and peasants now up on the walls helping us out. Right, I wasn't anticipating that, but apparently they're very happy to use our ladders too. Beautiful. Our men are winning the battle. If we continue like this, we will smash the enemy. And thank you very much for confirming, Mr. Narrator Man. Yes, indeed, it would appear that the influx of additional Venetians has kind of tipped the balance in our favour, just in terms of, uh, yeah, the number of troops present. So at this point, this gate should hopefully belong to us momentarily. You guys are seeing off these guys. You guys can probably, yeah, you know what, just finish off these guys while they're trying to run through you. Chop them, or don't bother chopping them down, whichever is fine. Right, get down here. At this point, the Polish forces at our gate are completely collapsing. The Papal States still aren't bothering to actually move in. The Venetians are sort of helping out, but also sort of not. Okay, Allies capture building. Technically, I believe that is now a... Yeah, that's a Venetian gate at this exact moment in time for reasons. Who bloody knows, eh? So that's all lovely. So at this point, things are looking very under control. Okay, this has been an interesting battle. And a third breach by the flipping Papal States. At some point, they'll actually bother to get involved. Maybe? Any movement from you after a third breach? Or are you determined literally not to actually advance until you've actually used every single bit of ammo in your actual uh, bits of artillery? Because I suspect that's the case. They're playing a more game right now. The fact that it's a Venetian gate is not, however, going to stop some of these peasant crossmen from walking all the way around to the Papal States breach, because I don't know they want to go through the Holy Breach. They feel that's more appropriate or something. And in come more armoured sergeants and Slav mercenaries. Lovely. Right, there's a handful of survivors down here, but honestly, it's nothing major at this point. We're just kicking some mercenary spearmen out of there. Viking raiders, get over here ready to fight these guys. At this point, I think you can handle this by yourselves. Lovely. Let's actually just send in the remainder of the troops at this point. We may as well pour in as we've got a bit of extra strength going on here. In fact, actually, we didn't bring much, to be honest, did we? This is mainly mercenary forces. Right, you guys, get in here, head over there, help out, please. Thank you. And my Viking Raiders just head over here and start chopping their way through some stuff. They're massively outnumbered, but everything in front of them is spear militia, indirect fire, town militia. They should hopefully be able to basically just kick off a mass route of all of that themselves. And there's some peasants. Some lovely, lovely Venetian peasants just showed up too. Well done, lads. And as I suspected, my Viking Raiders are doing an excellent job over here, just chopping through some flipping town militia and spear militia. They're going down nice and fast and getting very, very nervous indeed. They're shaken. My men are still at steady. And finally, the gates are opened and in come the reinforcements. Some lovely, fresh, dismounted Huskars. Now that'll help clear out this blockage here. Now we've got a second bundle of troops somewhere around here-ish. Aha! This is where all your cavalry is hiding out, together with some final reserves here. Seemingly trying to guard the gate against the Papal States. Don't worry, the Papal States have apparently literally zero interest in ever advancing. The Venetians, however, are very happy to take advantage of that. And tragically, it looks like the Papal States ran out of ammo at 96% damage to that wall. Very, very sad indeed. But in come some actual mercenary Frankish knights. They won't last very long. Oh no, you had a little bit more ammo, probably in your ballista. So that's three breaches. Is that enough for you? Any chance you're planning to actually move in? We are crusading. Do you remember that? No. No, they're not interested. They're just taunting. 
They're just taunting over to the city that's way, way over there and not getting involved. And yes, indeed, at this point, the Polish resistance on this street has completely flipping collapsed. That's fine. I should probably leave these guys be, though. Like, I would actually like, you know, something to be left for the Venetians. That'd be nice. So I think I'm just going to pull back at this point, guard this gate, and the Venetians and the Papal States can do the rest of it, all right? I've done way more than my fair share. Ah, and I think, in fact, these armoured sergeants might be coming round here to potentially open up this gate or rendezvous with all of the Venetian cavalry that's made its way round here together with the General's bodyguard, more knights, and here we are, Balkan archers. Balkan archers are actually really, really damn good. So, here we go. The main Venetian strength is now coming up on the breach over here. Oh, here we are. The Venetian forces have sort of reunified in this sort of area and looks like they're sending all of their cavalry over here to take on Polish nobles, good, that's a nice one to pick off there. They're bulky, but they're missile cavalry, though they are actual proper heavy cavalry too, so... Uh... This is going to be a bit of a grinding one. Cavalry versus cavalry over there. Honestly, you'd really want infantry to be taking out Polish nobles if you can, but... Seems like they're actually going down pretty fast. They've got their general up front there, good old Barbus the Mad. <laughs> Bear in mind, Barbus the Mad is so mad, his troops suffer very significant uh, morale penalties. So it would not surprise me if the Venetians fluffed this yet. And as for their infantry, those guys are coming up round here, but mercenaries and light infantry. Yeah, actually, I would not be surprised if the Venetians are going to totally fluff this and I'll actually be the one who needs to go in and finish it off. But that's fine, I may as well let these guys soften them up a bit first. These Polish nobles are certainly going to go down first, at least. With good old Barbus the Mad right flipping there, backing up his cavalry, yeah, things are under control for the time being. And the frame rate seems to have recovered a tiny bit too. Because quite a few Poles are dead. Now, here comes the second wave of the Venetian assault. The infantry who looped round. Now, they've actually got some peasant crossbowmen at the back. That'll do some good work. I'll be they don't have a great shot at anything, to be honest. Yeah, they can get some bolts in over there. But equally, their own kind of Slav mercenaries have got a little bit in the way. But they're taking on mercenary Frankish knights. Now, those guys are not the best at all. So, actually, the Slav mercenaries should do a good job against them, especially with crossbow support. So, that's absolutely fine. What's going on over here, meanwhile? Those guys are down to 11 and wavering fine. They'll break soon, and then the horses will run straight on into the mercenary crossbowmen. Lovely. And there's some peasant archers. They're not doing anything at all. Where, however, is... There you are. There's the generous bodyguard. Now, what are you doing? You're just hiding at the back, are you? You massive hero, you. The iron is, of course, the general's bodyguard just basically put a big charge in over here and then rolled up here. They could probably roll up all the infantry right now. And then the Venetian strength would be significantly broken down. And yep, there go the mercenary crossbowmen already broken. And now they will be ridden down very effectively. We'll see their numbers starting to drop very quickly. I say as it stays very, very firmly at 27. <laughs> Oh no, there it is, there it is, it drops a little bit at least, marvellous, actually only dropped to 22, you did a very bad job chasing those guys down. Right, the Slav mercenaries are doing a surprisingly competent job, albeit they are now shaken against these mercenary Frankish knights, but ah, mercenary spearmen are definitely better than Slav mercenaries, so they'll definitely kind of break eventually. But there's some good backup over here, with a whole bunch of indirect fire, and Balkan archers will actually hold their own surprisingly competently. So there's a bunch of indirect fire, and with the horses actually to pin things in place, if potentially all these guys get pulled over here, this might actually end up working. Where are you guys even shooting, by the way? Are you shooting over into the... Hang on, watch your target. Watch your targets. If your target's a good target, actually, this might not even be a bad attack. This might actually be, presumably accidentally, a quite competent one. No, they're shooting over here and then immediately bottling it because they don't want to hit their own Slav mercenaries. So, well flipping done. Right, because if they were just shooting over here, this would work very nicely. Speaking of which, hang on, where's the... Where's the leader? Okay, he's naffed off over towards this gate. He's just hiding over here. And I've got some Crusader spearmen there. Are you going to... Okay, are you 100% sure that this is what you want to do? All right, fine. Apparently, I need to take on this guy. Whatever, eh? Screw you. Right. Spearman, go and do some good work to him. No, he certainly doesn't want to take on Spearman, unsurprisingly. Probably because he's realised that right now his plaza is in an incredibly precarious position. Yeah, mercenary spearmen are still doing good work here. And the archers don't have a great shot. But these guys are being wiped out. Town militia are almost done. Mercenary spearmen are... Ah, 
Mercenary Spearmen have got on top of the flipping horses here, so Barbus the Mad might get into a bit of trouble sooner or later. He is right at the front line, and there are Spearmen right flipping there, but uh, he'll survive for the time being, but he is already, he's definitely a little bit bloodied. He could be more bloodied than he is, but he is definitely bloodied, and his own bodyguard is shoving him into the fight. I think the Venetians have had enough of Barbus the Mad, quite frankly. Uh, right, what are you doing at this exact moment in time? We've got... Ah! You did decide to take me on, albeit only briefly. And then the General's bodyguard decided to flee over here. Mercenary crossbowmen have decided to... Are you trying to chase down the General? Is, is that what you're doing right now? That's a terrible idea. Backed up by Balkan archers. Okay, Venice, I can see indeed you are being led by a madman. Yes, that does seem to stack up with what I'm seeing right now. Mercenary spearmen are now dropping fast. Barbus the Mad is not yet dead, so hopefully he might just survive. In fact, actually, one of his crossbowmen is trying to actually uh, block him off there. And I think actually the poles broke and we actually took out their leader there. Marvellous. So... Nothing left now but a handful of troops on the plaza. Very, very nice indeed. I do like seeing a nice big battle. Albeit it would have been a nicer, bigger battle if you'd bothered getting involved, Papal States. I mean, you're actually still firing. Is that what's going on here? That's not firing. That's not firing. I think they want to fire. They're yeah, they are. Okay, they're actually refusing to move forward until such time as all of their ammo's used up. So they're now trying to make a fourth breach using purely ballistas. Marvellous. And at this point, we're officially in control of the plaza. I don't think there's anything left, to be honest. So, what is it? It is... Hang on, no, that's a building. What's left? There's something left here. Oh, oh, it's over there. It's over there. It is... Uh... Ah, mercenary spearmen. 63 of them, actually. Still a few. And are those... Ooh, the... Hang on, no. No, the Slavs did indeed give up, unfortunately. They've naffed off over there. But that's fine. There's plenty of fire over here. If anyone wants to, like, you know, come over and help... No! Oh, no, no, someone does. Someone's actually got themselves... Ah, the Balkan archers are just shooting those guys in the back. Very, very nice indeed. That will actually help out quite a lot, because, yeah, the Balkan archers are actually pretty damn good. You can see there, they do a lot, even to mercenary spearmen. They're pretty bulky. And as the final few people go down, down to eight at this exact moment in time. Let's see if we can just keep our eye on whoever the last man standing is. And it might be... Is it you? Are you the last guy? I think there's... Yep, you're the last guy. There you are, the final defender of the heretics. And in comes the men to finish him off. Lovely. And down he goes. The crusade is complete. Scruffy, but in all fairness, I can't complain too much about losing 247 men to take a city with large stone walls. That's absolutely fine. You, however, were flipping useless. You managed to lose 10 men, but you didn't even step a foot inside the city. Well bloody done, you genius. And down go the Polish forces. And I'm going to get myself a city, a giant pile of money, and a giant pile of chivalry as well. Magnificent. Beautiful. So, absolutely, I'll take the 18,000. Thank you very much indeed. Now, relations improve with the Papal States. They're thrilled that I actually, you know, won a crusade and whatever. The crusade has been successful. I've got even more money and all the units that took part get the XP bonus. Very, very nice indeed. This guy straight away gets a bunch of knights for chivalry and command. Very, very good indeed. He's also noble in rule despite just sacking the settlement, but whatever, A eh? Relations worsened. <laughs> The Poles weren't happy about it, though. The Poles were very unhappy with it all. Now, the big question is, what exactly are we going to do with the Hungarians? Because they're just standing right here, and I can't help but notice, you are standing right next to an army of the Papal States. Now, isn't that interesting? Because they're my allies, you're my enemies. I don't think they've actually been... Hang on. Go over to the Pope screen here. No! His Holiness feels no ill will against Hungary, apparently. Yet, I can't help but notice, if I was to declare war against the Hungarians right now, then the Papal States would actually be forced to fight alongside me as my ally. Oh, yes. Not only would the Papal States basically hand us victory, but that would get Hungary excommunicated straight away. Meaning at that point, I could go and take their precious Vienna off them with no consequences whatsoever. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 yes. I think I could deal with that. But first, let's see where we need to spend some of this lovely, lovely money we've just earned. So, Aleppo. Ah, oh, 
Aleppo is one turn away from being ready to become a citadel. Yes, that will make an excellent front line against these bastards they come in. Also, I just did a quick count here. Um, it's now 12 and a half stacks of Mongols. So there's 12 full stacks in here, and then this stack as well. Okay, more like 12 and a third, I guess. 12 and a third full stacks of Mongols are coming this way. And that's your lot. That's now the full amount. But obviously they couldn't advance on Adana with only like 10 stacks. No, they needed the full 12. This is it now. At this point, they don't kind of fall back anymore. That's the reason they kept falling back. It's because the game provides them in waves, but the AI is kind of weird and it wants to always reunify. So when they arrive and the new stack arrives, the old stack starts retreating to join it with the new stacks because they want to move all together, which you'd think they would have kind of, you know, noticed and patched and made it so either they all arrive together or the original stacks don't go back to the old stack. Otherwise, they just keep kind of wandering backwards and forwards, which is why you've been seeing what you've been seeing with those guys. But now that's done. Now they're just going to go somewhere. And I'm kind of hoping it's over here first, because then I'll have the opportunity to further reinforce Adana and Aleppo before they actually get over here. Because if I can get, say, four Citadels up and running, at that point, we'll be in good shape, I'd say. Ah, yes, I did say I want to do this. Master Armourer at Gaza. Oh, yes, abso flipping lootly. That's a lot of money, but I'd like somewhere in the world that can produce full plate, because full plate is just good. Antioch can, oh, Antioch can 100% have a flipping warehouse. Yep, every flipping time. Let's get our money's worth. It doesn't have a flipping grade exchange yet. <laughs> oh, perfect. Aleppo, leave that, because next turn that needs the Citadel. And Adana. Okay, Adana, we need to get to 4,500. Okay, the moment this place grows next turn, move King Steve over to Adana. He can start this place growing at a ridiculous rate. So that's fine. Uh, what do we actually need here, to be honest? I'm getting the... Yeah, getting the bows in production. Another place where I can just produce Norse archers, because Norse archers are great. That'll flipping do. Let's just get that in production there. Good. That's everything we need in the Middle East for the time being, unless I want to just train more troops over at Gaza. Oh, yeah. These guys are looking good, damn it. Oh, and these guys can be upgraded with that full plate. I like that full plate. Leave it for now. Let's just wait to see where the rest of them go, because we might need to spend some of this money elsewhere. Like, Marseille, do you need anything? No, Marseille seems to be well under control. That's 100% fine. Ah, wait, hang on. I remember this. We've got ourselves a brand new fleet ready to go here. So, you, my good man. Ah, Portuguese Navy. How do you fancy... Oh, bloody hell. Okay, apparently they've got quite a big... Okay, good. We have managed to chase some of them off. That's good. And hopefully you've got... Oh, two bloody admirals. Well, of course there's two bloody admirals. Uh, this game's funny with that sort of thing. Right, you go over here, take these guys out, knock them out, lovely. Pirate sinking. Now, this fleet just head over here and join up with the others. We need to get the Portuguese fleets out of here so they can't actually reinforce. You guys can just start... Actually, you could put this place under siege right now. Yeah, that might be worth thinking about. Maybe we just want to... Actually, eight turns they can wait. Eight Name flipping turns. We will meet you there. Hmm. Okay, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get my cavalry hanging onto the exact position. It's that spot there. Oh, that spot there's fine too, actually, because we're going uh, this way. So we'll have you lot move to here and then put this place under siege. Ah, the gates are indeed open. Beautiful. You lot move in over here and buy some Welsh spearmen. That way we look legitimate. We're not like, you know, a big force that's conquering. We are the Welsh Liberation Army come to liberate Wales with the help of the Welsh who totally asked for our help. Marvellous. Right, we'll come back to the Welsh situation momentarily. Don't need to rush into any of that. But yeah, taking uh, Wales off the Portuguese strikes me as a good sort of thing to do. Now, back to the Hungary situation, because, yeah, I haven't done a quick bit of merging and whatever. I need to ideally engage these people in a battle without actually having them run away, because I do actually want a battle to occur, because I want this force destroyed, and I want the Papal States to do it. Now, if I just send one guy out here, actually, it probably won't matter, because the reinforcements will count towards the battle, right? So just you... If you're willing to do that, yeah, have a fight. And what are you going to do about that? Ah, you're willing to do this, are you? Oh, well, this is just flipping marvellous. Okay. Right. So, the Hungarian king himself, who is... Ooh. Oh, I'm very glad we get to kill you right now. Because you are an incredibly good king. 9 out of 10 authority you do not see very often. But, wait, how on earth are you 9 out of 10 with alcoholic? 
Ah, perfect politician, deceptive, honest, but that doesn't actually help that out. Uh, Crusader doesn't help him. Actually, how on earth have you managed to get to that level? I'm not sure how that's actually being countered, to be honest. Well, screw it, we're going to kill this bastard right now. So he's got with him large amounts of cavalry, fair bit of infantry. Ah, these guys, these guys are hilarious, I love these guys. Uh, right, and what else do we have here? Anything major? Are you pilgrims or religious? No, you're just pilgrims. They're nothing. Fine, we can ride them down. Bit of siege equipment. Not much of an actual front line. However, the Pope is bringing with him a much better front line. Italian spear militia is no flipping joke. Okay, this works for me. Let's flipping do this now. Okay, this is where the Pope makes up for not showing up for the actual crusade. And I'm pretty sure I just heard the little bong in the background there that means the Hungarians have already been excommunicated. Marvellous. So, start the deployment. So, the Hungarians are going to be down here. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got the uphill advantage. Now, admittedly, we've not got much in the way of indirect fire. And actually, if they start over here, they'll have the uphill advantage. But screw it, don't worry about it. And the... The Papal States will be coming from the north, won't they? Yeah, they'll be coming from over here somewhere. So let's just draw up over here, and then me and them can draw up together. So we want to make sure we win fairly major. Though actually, if the Papal States armies gets massively weakened, that doesn't hurt. So I don't really want a Papal States army bumming around, because I'm not sure what it's going to do next. Actually, if it's in strong shape, and it's at war with the Hungarians, it could theoretically go and take a Hungarian city. Okay, fine. I want the Papal States to be nice and strong. Me and them get on just fine. Right. Everyone drawn up. Fairly standard formation. Archers in the back, not on the front on this occasion, because they're archers, not crossbowmen. Start the battle, and uh, in come you guys behind me. Beautiful. The Papal States have arrived. Beautiful. And in they come. Right. Now, where are the Hungarians, and how are you drawn up for the time being, and are you moving towards me? Ah, there you are. Okay. Looks like they're moving forward pretty quickly. I probably want to just fall back onto some high ground up here pretty fast, to be honest. So you guys, get moving please. I don't want to fall into range of their artillery. I'd rather be a supporting force on the side of the papal armies. Ah, here we go. Looks like they're entering the battlefield, and for once, they actually want to bloody do something. Oh, they've brought Pavi's crossbow militia. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These guys are brutal. Oh, I love seeing the Pope on the field. <laughs> It's so nice to see the Pope actually out and about. Like, he'll very often do something. Like, more often than not, he'll take, say, Florence, if he's lucky. And I've seen him take Corsica many, many times. But actually seeing him head out into the wider world and get involved in Crusades, it happens, but not that much. And often the Crusades are over before he actually gets there. So it's lovely to see him actually get involved, albeit not very much, you know, with an actual uh, Crusade siege itself and... Okay, you guys are pushing forward. Ah, you've got flipping Pavi's crossbow militia as well. Fine. I don't have the range for this. I'm going to pull my troops back and let the Papal States do the bulk of the work here. I'm going to take a few light knocks from these guys, but their loading and reloading takes so long. We're only going to take like a very, very light knock. We're going to back off up the hill. That's fine. These guys are already giving chase. And come on. Come on, you popiness. I want you to get involved in this. Me and you together, please. I need to get involved in this. That's right. Keep falling back and falling towards the Pope. I think they're just kind of forming up into a new battle line they like the look of before they actually start marching forward. So I'm just going to keep falling back until he's ready to move. As soon as as soon as soon these infantry all get into position, I think he should be fine. But oh, I like the Pope's colours as well. White and gold. Really, really nice. It's a nice looking army. And at this point, it looks like, yes, indeed, it looks like the Pavese crossbow militia have decided to head over towards the Pope. And actually, they look a little bit exposed to me. Okay, this works for me. If they want to be way exposed out front, I'm just going to actually send my horses down here to slam into them. That'll be a nice, quick, easy victory. Now, don't actually send your flipping scouts, however. Scouts are not really for that sort of thing. Send some actual proper cavalry. You want a proper lancers down charge. These guys are tougher than they flipping look. Right, but thundering down the hill with some heavy cavalry, that should do the job pretty nicely. These guys are, yeah, they totally want to take on the Pope one-on-one -on -one in a long-range fight. The Pope is... Okay, I'm going to be honest, the Pope doesn't have a huge amount of experience at, you know, arranging an army, which is why this might be going a little bit on the wrong side, but that's fine. Luckily, I do know what to do, which is, if crossbowmen, then horses. 
Oh, here we are. Paper meets scissors. And in comes the charge. Beautiful. And in comes a little bit more as well. Uh, there we are. Get your lancers down. Charge forward. Thank you. Right into the rear. Men get sent flying. And we just need to back off at this point. Lovely. Back off. Back off. They're now moving forward at speed. I'm going to bring my own horses back. You decided not to charge. Well done. That's supposed to be a charge, but I don't believe it for one flipping second. You guys just get back behind the line, please. Right. And you guys just fall back over here. Thank you. And please run. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Crusader Knights over here are getting involved, but my archers are now shooting them from the rear, so that's not a problem. There's more Crusader Knights. And in go the Yap. In comes the Italian Spear Militia, and they're going to actually catch some Crusader Knights. That doesn't work very well at all, to be honest. These guys are now counter-charging. Dismounted Huskarls, get around to the back of these guys. You're charging uphill. That's not going to work very well for you. These guys are going to break almost immediately. Yeah, those Crusader Knights don't really want to engage uphill against actual spearmen. That's not going to work for them. More Crusader Knights. In comes some artillery from the Pope. Very, very nice indeed. There's not much going on on this flank. So this flank probably wants to start just kind of moving around in this sort of a direction and start encircling. So you guys just start moving around over there. Crusader Knights over there. You guys just head over here. Start getting these guys down. They're kind of causing trouble for this flank. Get over here. Get your spears down over there. Viking Raiders just took the brunt of that. But now these guys are basically encircled by actual flipping uh, spearmen. So they're going to run into trouble pretty quickly. You guys around here. Ah, we've actually found the General's bodyguard that's fine that's the actual king himself so that's going to cause a little bit of trouble everyone just fire on him we've kind of got him encircled already my battle line's completely given up but i don't really need a proper battle line because the pope's doing a good job already driving these guys back yeah there was a lot of really flimsy infantry the pope's already seen off what's going on over here those are crusader sergeants over there that's absolutely A-OK. -okay. You guys just back off over here and then get a charge into the side of them. You guys provide some backup. Right, Crusader Sergeants have already gone down over there. We have got Tau Militia breaking over here. There's the General's Bodyguard. Finally managed to catch up with him. Those troops are starting to break. And now we just need to swing in here. At this point, yeah. Crusader Troops... They're not quite flipping, say, uh, mercenaries, but once the crusade's over, you're not going to really want to be expecting too much of them. You guys just start basically piling in here, just start chasing them off. At this point, everything's falling apart. That town militia is not going to last very long at all. So probably at this point, you guys just want to head through here, around the back of the general's bodyguard. Everything's going nicely. The Pope is now chasing those guys off. The general himself is still involved at the time being, but I would like him to die. If he could die, that'd be perfect. So there's not much left here. You guys just keep working over here. Why don't you guys just head over in this direction, please? But the Pope himself... No, sorry, not the Pope. The Pope isn't here. But the faction leader of the Hungarians... Actually, you know what? I can say king and actually be correct for once. He's naffed off over some... Oh, dear. That's what happens if you charge into Italian spear militia backed up with Italian crossbows. All right? Doesn't end well for you. Now, at this point, it should all basically collapse. We can just start basically A moving forward. Not that A moving is a thing in this game, but if it was, I could do that. Everyone forward, hit those guys. Lovely. Now, I want these guys pretty much finished off, please. Every single one of them. Just basically send my cavalry out into the world to ride these guys down. That's what I want. I want everyone flipping dead. No, continue the battle. I want these guys all ridden down, please. I've only got 178 captives so far. How did that go, by the way? Actually, we lost 20% of our own force, which isn't too surprising, really. There was a lot of decent troops on the field here. Pavis crossbowmen. A faction leader himself is not nothing, so... 20% is fine, and I think we've also saved the Pope from taking much of the way of damage. I will be interested to see what he does next. That will be a very interesting little experiment to run. And indeed, I think the Pope... Yep, yeah, the Pope's actually pursuing too. <laughs> He's just chopping down some guys, alright. No mercy. The Bible says nothing about mercy. Okay, it probably does. But they're kind of ignoring that bit today. And looks like my cavalry has nicely caught up with everything at this point. We're doing a good job riding down some people. Prisoners going up nice and fast. Ah, especially the Pavese crossbow militia. Do not let them get away under any circumstances. I want them wiped out. Because if they get back to a city and retrain, that will be a little bit on the annoying side. So I want them definitely dead. 
So luckily my scouts here. No, not my scouts. Sorry, I thought those were my scouts. But my Crusader Knights and my Mercenary Frankish Knights will do an excellent job chasing those bastards down. And as usual, if you run into trouble with troops chasing down other troops, just basically actually move them through the troops. And then once they're right in the middle of them, attack. And then this 17 will immediately start falling and will plummet down from 17 to 13, 12, 10. Yeah, that's the way to do it if you run into trouble. Because yeah, the AI for... Chasing down troops in Medieval 2 was a lot worse than Rome 1. Arguably, I don't know whether that's actually um, intentional or not. Because I always felt that, like actually chasing down was a bit too good in Rome, but also a bit too buggy in Medieval 2. So I'm not sure which I prefer, but in either case, this seems to have done the job very, very nicely indeed. Uh, well done, your popiness. We have won a great victory here today. So, me and the Pope lost about 400 apiece, but that's absolutely fine. We've still got very workable armies right here. The Hungarians, meanwhile, have been pretty much eliminated. And with the King dead, hopefully, the army will just cease to exist. Marvellous. And what to do with all of these lovely, lovely, lovely prisoners? Well, you know what? I think this guy is pious and chivalrous enough. So, one little mass execution won't hurt. There they go. Very, very nice indeed. And the Hungarians... Ah! Some of the Hungarians, apparently, enough of them did manage to actually get out of there to make a run for it. Ooh! That's way more than I was expecting. I was told only 90 survived. How did you bloody manage to all get away? Now, as for my new city of Krakow, by the way, <laughs> apparently it's a little bit on the damage side, so probably I should put some of my money into repairing the damn thing. Yeah, you know what? That'll be lovely. Marvellous. Anything I actually need to... Build here. Brothel wouldn't hurt just so I can train spies. Lovely. Get that into production. And also retrain some of these lads if we can. And then there's your crusader, your crusader. Yes. Right. Merge you two. Let's just actually get some proper units going on here. And now once again, yeah, let's just do some merging to actually get some better quality troops here. You can just ask her. It doesn't matter. We can't actually repair these guys anyway. So we may as well just merge them as best we can into just kind of like a handful of better quality units. There we are. And ooh, you down to five, you poor bastards. And we won't be able to repair you for a while. Actually, you know what? I could send some... Damage troops up to Thorn, but irritating with some rebels in the way, so I might need to send some better troops. Actually, I've got a massive group of... Why are you guys just sitting in Breslau? I feel like that's more troops... Oh, it's because they used to be massive forces over in Krakow that I was kind of keeping an eye on. Fine, you guys can probably head back to Thorn for retraining at this point, to be perfectly honest. Right, all of you, back to Thorn. Also, get rid of these bastards while you're doing it. I think we can auto-resolve that one. That's absolutely fine. Also, apparently, you're a new general. Marvellous. Well done. Great haircut. We've got Jens. Jens Assenberg. Or Björg. Jens Assenberg. Fine. So, we've got this guy right here. Nothing major. Speaks of loyalty. Winning first. Marks of war. Okay, that's... Fine, if not spectacular. You head over to we Thorn march. and get your troops we retrained there. Meanwhile, the troops at Krakow, probably a few of them also need retraining, like this particular set of Viking Raiders. Yes, that could do with some retraining. Other than that, actually, I think things are under control. You just head on your way up in this direction and go join up with Thorn as well. What's actually in Thorn? We've got... Ah, yes, indeed. The very old Magnus uh, Scotland at this point. A great man, but getting old. And member of his family, Tororan of Tasselak, ready to take over from him. Honestly, he's not very good, but I'd like to have someone over here at Thorn, given it is, in fact, our capital right now. Though, actually, I may want to move the capital a tiny bit south. Like, Krakow might make a good capital. Also, what have I just done here? Feels unappreciated. Feels respected. Doesn't feel respected. Sometimes you get confused by these notes. You're still chivalrous, right? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this guy is our factioner. Let's just kind of check in with whether he's a better factioner now. Because now he's 10 out of 10 on the chivalry front. I feel better about him. That's certainly true. Now, loyal beyond questions, great. Plus three chivalry. That's lovely. In fact, actually, yeah, wherever he lives, the population is going to explode. Oh, yeah, plus 6%. Very, very nice indeed. Great speaker, that's good. Feels respected, that's good. Gregarious, that's good. Strong defender, also good. Tactically sound, plus two to line of sight, nice. Trustworthy, plus four to law. Conforming, admires technology, oh yeah. You, my good man, have become very, very good indeed. Mostly rational, plus one to authority. Okay, he needs a bit more authority yet, but we've turned this guy from merely okay into a pretty good, competent, solid leader, I would say. I'm pretty happy with that, yeah. 
And indeed, Hungary straight to zero out of ten on the old popometer over there. Marvellous. Oh, guys. Guys, guys, guys. You know what that means? You know what that means? I've got eyes. I've got eyes on Vienna. Because you fought so long and so hard to take it. And it's been your staging post for taking Nuremberg for so flipping long. Actually, if I take Vienna, then the Hungarians stop putting pressure on the Imperials. And I want them to put pressure on the Imperials. Okay. What else could I theoretically take? I could just take their capital off them. Huge stone wall. Yeah, could just take... But then I'm kind of surrounded. Because then they've got Bran over here which is an actual castle, and they'd have Vienna very close by. Okay, maybe I just kind of send some more spies into their territory to figure out what they're doing next. And she's speaking yes. of which, I can probably send a spy round mm -hmm. here now. Yeah, that's fine. You can just live there now and keep a bit of a closer eye. New faction leader. Bloody hell, he's got good authority as well. Blimey. Right, well, well flipping done. Also, chivalric knights. Nice. Someone's been investing in stables. Now, as for the remaining force over here at Krakow, honestly, I wouldn't mind if they just started mopping up the flipping Polish at this point. I think the Poles are down to, uh, yeah, they're down to three settlements now, and I think all three of them are castles. The Poles no longer have a single city, so their economy is in the flipping toilet. I tell you what, we've got a decent force right here at Kiev. Are you a decent commander, by the way? No, not you. You. Okay, abhors drink, no. Too comfortable, no. Okay, you are potentially... Oh no, you're poor with taxes. Well, you're brave. That's good. But you're not much of a leader in any way, are you? No. No, you're not. Right, is anywhere particularly vulnerable? Actually, everywhere is vulnerable. With the exception of Vilnius, which still has some strength in it. Right, picking off these two wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. And actually... Taken over here, so I've got a more of a castle on my border with the Hungarians. Yeah, I could deal with that. Right, let's start thinking about moving in that direction. Especially if I can actually, while I'm moving, pick up some more mercenaries just to and bulk out this army a bit. Right, leave here and just leave the flipping militia in place at Kiev. If need be... Yeah, you know what, let's have some more troops trained at Lasagna, ready to either go to Vilnius or to head down to Kiev to reinforce if need be. Let's just get some more troops in production here. Ah, Norse archers, marvellous. Norse archers, to get some dismounted huskarls, very, very good indeed, lovely. And you, just I'm keep heading down south, toss down those watchtowers, why the flip not, eh? And would you believe French diplomats, because it's never not French diplomats. And just one more thing to do today, we need to kick the Portuguese out of Wales. There's an odd sentence I never thought I'd have to say, but here we flipping are. Because yes indeed, the spies have opened the gates. So inside the city, there's some really nice good solid troops, but I've got enough armour piercing stuff to get through them. All we need to do really is at the beginning of the fight take out the reinforcing army that's going to be on that side of the field. So if we just run over there, take out those guys nice and quickly, it's mainly going to be cavalry into a handful of Pavese crossbowmen. Yeah, that'll shift the odds very much in our favour right there. So we know where these guys are going to be coming from. They're going to be coming from this sort of a direction. So I would say my cavalry alone, as it's feudal knights together with my general, should be enough to take out a couple of basic mailed knights. So these guys are going to come over here and basically intercept those lads. Meanwhile, round at the actual doorway, I would say, actually, you know what we can do? I've got myself a catapult here. The gates are already open, so I can basically just start using my catapult to take out any towers that I don't like the look of. So that's bloody nice. Meanwhile, behind that, you know what? We've just got plenty of flipping heavy infantry that's specifically designed to be anti-armor. That's what Denmark's good at countering armor and these Norse axemen oh yeah you lads are gonna do marvelous good work with your upgraded weapons you are gonna be magnificent in this fight right start the battle the gates already open that's absolutely fine and the reinforcements should be coming in momentarily as well time to see how you guys have decided to draw up you guys have decided to draw up by entirely falling back well that works for me probably what I want to do therefore is oh Hang on, you guys are not coming from the angle I expect you to come from, but that's fine. You guys draw up over there, and then I'm just going to basically bull rush the gate with everything I've flipping got, because why the bloody hell not, eh? You guys just get in here before they decide to actually activate the flipping towers. There's some dismounted Portuguese knights, not looking so terrifying, to be perfectly honest, as long as I can actually get them on the ground and their gates don't work. That should do just fine. Now, in comes something. 
So really, hang on, they, they're probably going to beat me to the walls, but I'm going to get a good run up before those guys get into position. And those guys are only at... Okay, now they've sort of changed their minds a little bit. So they are potentially now deciding they do want to get involved. Right, you guys, uh, head over here. You guys over here. You guys over here. Everyone just charge in. Good big charge with your lancers down, please. I want guys fleeing. Because if some of their crossbowmen start immediately fleeing, then as a result, the rest of them will go down a lot easier too. You guys round the outside, please. Round the outside. No, don't you get the flip away. Right. Round the outside here, I want these guys encircled. And round here, round here, round here. Did you just let them get past you? Are they past you at this point? You stupid bastards, that was the one thing you were supposed to not do. Right, we've managed to cut down one of them. One of the flipping male knights made it through. That doesn't bloody help me in the slightest. Right, my troops have all managed to make it through here. They've taken some very, very light knocks, but... In all fairness, at this point, we can just chunk our way through these lads pretty easily. We just need to push them back ever so slightly. Just a little bit. Just a little bit more. Okay. You guys have managed to... Yeah, these guys are basically like Prinkipes. Imagine them as slightly more bulky Prinkipes. Because they've got throwables. They're kind of javelin and they also work as heavy infantry. They're not perfect in either role, but they'll do the flipping job. And there's more over there as well. Rather confusing, yeah, they get the long-range troop symbol, the triangle flag, even though they're not really... That's not really what they do. Uh, you guys are up here. That's absolutely A-OK. -okay. You're trying to... I think you're going to try and take down my flipping catapult. That's fine. My troops should do an excellent job just basically cutting through you. One of you, if you can... Pull out and go and deal with those guys. That's 66 Norse Axe. And if you can, go over there and stop those guys from tossing in, flipping, uh, they're just kind of javelins or whatever they are. Because you will do an excellent job just basically hacking these guys down very, very quickly indeed. Yeah, that should do the job nicely. And meanwhile, these guys are going to be immediately wiped out by my cavalry. Then my cavalry will swing in. The towers have started deactivating because I've pushed these guys back far enough. In come more of those guys. If they're not tossing in their missiles, they're not as dangerous as they might be. Yep, this is going pretty well, I'd say. Are you guys going to try and run up onto the walls? Okay, interesting decision. At this point, my axemen are basically just swinging and chopping them down. <laughs> these guys do not have the defense they need for this sort of thing. One of you is already fleeing. You over there. Not you, though. You keep focusing over here, please. Just keep chopping these guys down. I love that big choppy motion. That pretty much guarantees a kill against any of these guys. They just basically, it's a swing and a kill. And a swing and a kill. Lovely. And how are you guys doing over there, by the way? Have you wiped out? Yeah, you've wiped out those feudal knights. Very, very nice indeed. So probably we're safe to just start pushing in with my cavalry. Those guys have broken over there. That's the dismounted Portuguese who were up on the walls. Now, these guys are going to start wavering momentarily. They're massively outnumbered. That's partly why these guys are wavering too. And then there's going to be nothing left but the cavalry. Yeah, nice and simple. I was a bit worried by this fight. I thought we might take some significant casualties. But actually, it seems like we've done a good job. Right, let's get on top of these guys. Just make sure they don't actually make it back to the plaza. The horses will make sure that does not happen. So, you guys will break momentarily as well. There we go, beautiful. Now, my horses can just basically get through here as far as you can, and they're going to start doing some lovely work chopping down these bastards. Now, there's some mailed knights back here. Now, hang on, where are the Welsh? Because you're actually spearmen and whatever. So, you guys, get everyone fall back, please. Everyone just fall back a little bit, with the exception of the Welsh, all right? We're taking Wales. That means the Welsh are going to get involved with this one, all right? You guys need to liberate yourselves. I can't do everything for you. Actually, I hope you're effective against horses. Hang on, check here. Yeah, bonus fighting cavalry. Good. Because sometimes people with spears don't actually get bonuses fighting cavalry, which can be very, very odd indeed, but it's just a thing that... No, 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 no. Don't run up onto the plaza. Welsh. Welsh thing. There we are. Mailed knights take out these guys. Now, there's still some of these lads whose name I'm not even going to try and pronounce. I'm just going to say they're Prinkipes. That's absolutely fine. And you know what? You lads, okay, you guys, get around here, take out these guys. Big group of Norse axemen versus these troops. That's going to be wonderful. How are you guys doing, by the way? You are doing... 
You're taking some losses, but you're also cutting through these guys pretty quickly. There's some dismounted Portuguese knights at the back. Shouldn't be a problem. But here we are. Norse flipping axemen. These guys now toss in there. They're not peeler. I can't remember what they're called. I think they're just referred to as javelins in the game. Not sure what the technical correct definition is for that. And in come the Norse axemen. Swing in their mighty, mighty axes. And they're just going to start chopping these guys down. Oh, I love Norse axemen so much. Oh, if I could marry them, I would. And in come those big swings, and whenever they do that big swing, someone just dies. Big old swing. Lovely, lovely, lovely. These guys going down very fast at this point. Now, how are the Welsh doing? The Welsh are doing... They're doing fine. It's pretty much a tie, to be honest. They've lost half their strength. The horse have lost half their strength as well. Where are all my troops, by the way? I should... Where are all my troops gone? You guys, probably, be ready to assist if need be. Just get over there and be ready to back them up. Because you might be needed to finish off the dismounted Portuguese knights over there. Meanwhile, over here, yep, doing very, very nice indeed. Those guys are down to 24, 23, falling fast. They're shaken already, but they'll stand and fight for the time being. Ooh, one of them just got flipped over by an axe in the stomach. Very, very nice indeed. And there we go. Down goes the leader. Very good. That might trigger these guys over here to rout, in fact. They're down to Wavery. Yep, and they break immediately. Lovely. Chase them down and finish off the Portuguese knights behind them. And the Welsh are... Oh, it's the battle of the Welsh between the Welsh and the horses. Come on, Welsh. Okay, they're shaken. These guys are wavering. So, technically... Oh, nice. Well done. And a whole bunch of horses just dropped there. Get in there. Finish them off. You've taken out the leader. So, I'd say this is kind of... You know, this is your victory. Get over there, by the way. Oh, no. Don't those guys get on top of the Welsh, because if all these guys kind of decide to join forces against the Welsh, that could go very badly. You guys, get round here to reinforce. Yeah, you guys, get over here and take out these lads. You Welsh lads, just focus on these lads. Charge in there, hit them with a spear. Very, very nice indeed. Still 32 of you. Portuguese knights don't seem interested in doing anything at all. You get over here with your mighty great axes. And in come my traditional lovely dismounted task cards. It's lovely that you can get this unit in the first turn of the game. And on turn, we're almost on turn 100. They're still really, really bloody useful. It's just such a damn solid unit, the dismounted task card. It's great. To my mind, it just kind of represents that, yeah, Denmark's a really, really, really good early game faction. As the game goes on, they fall behind a little bit. Like, some of their higher tier units aren't spectacular. Or rather, they don't get interesting new technology as much as some of the other factions. Like, say, Spain and Portugal get really interesting late game technology, which uh, Denmark doesn't really get. But to be honest, Denmark can take over the world before that even becomes an issue, so whatever. And, oh, the Welsh fled. Okay, fine. I was going to declare Welsh an independent free kingdom, but no. Now it doesn't get to be one anymore. Now it just gets to be part of the Danish Empire like all the others. And it's all your fault, you stupid Welsh bastards. And in come my axemen, now taking on the last of the Portuguese knights. So, it's time for a... Whatever one of them is, like a glaive or something, I don't know. Taking on a massive... Ooh, all right. All right, this is brutal fighting on both sides here. We've both got massive axe things. All right, deflects the shot there. Let's just watch fight between these two. Oh, and we go. Just kind of little glancing blows backwards and forwards. Oh, no. Oh, that guy's life got flipped, turned upside down. He's like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, except a Norse Axeman. But at this point, the axes are definitely winning the day here. Axes just going around. Oh, these Portuguese knights are brutal, by the way. Oh, you got flipped upside down too. It's a battle of the flips here, and I greatly approve. In come the dismounted Huskars to help out from behind. Get in behind them. Whack them in the back with your axes. Oh, yeah. And two of them go down straight away. And there's a third over here. Just stab him in the stomach. And he's just being bounced from person to person. you got to say, this guy's doing well. He's being attacked by axes from all sides. But that's surely got to be a lot. Yeah, this guy was the one that got the killing blow. Well done, lads. And you've got to love their celebration as they wave their big old axes in the air. Lovely. And there we are. Portugal has been kicked out of Wales. It's strange that it even needed to be done. But here we flipping are, I guess. And we can just occupy the settlement. No need to sack it. And that has made you fair in rule. Lovely. The Portuguese don't like us. I don't think they did in the first place. And with this new fleet that I'm now training and putting together, hopefully we can now chase off the Portuguese fleet and stop them ever coming back. We'll just keep this fleet kind of close by to Cornwall in order to chase off the Portuguese if they ever come back, which they probably bloody will, damn it. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen, I would say that is enough for now. Next time, I imagine the French have probably got enough strength now. They'll give a go to actually kind of attacking the walls of Paris. Though potentially, 
with this army right here, I might actually just go and give them a poke. Because with these feudal knights on their own, I might just might be able to take out the catapults or other trebuchets, which would be very, very useful indeed. And then we've got to figure out what to do with France. Because I kind of thought I'd left France with an incredibly weak leader. But I'm not sure if he like died of old age immediately or something, because they seem to actually have a pretty decent guy here running the show, so... Not sure what happened there. We'll have to see what we want to do with France. But in all fairness, France's power is pretty much shattered at this point. Like, we could go over and take any of their remaining cities any time we want to. More importantly, we need to figure out what to do with Hungary. Not because it's actually important, more just because I want bloody revenge against the Hungarian bastards who betrayed me. They flipping deserve it. So, we will see about that, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Medieval 2 Total War. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Wait, did people just vote out democracy? Hang on, what have you just done? Oh, go on, let's have the greatest Oktoberfest ever. Yay! Spain and Russia announced a new alliance as a result of the warmongering of certain Central European countries. Oh, well, excuse me! My leader from now on, no weeklings will stand in the way of this country's path to glory. Oh, God, Germany, not again!